<laughs> but I hope you will enjoy it and you'll like it. A simple introduction about uh, this instrument. This is called Ney and Nay, both. This is originally from, it goes between Persia and Kurdistan. Persia and Kurdistan, Iran. So, uh, this is a simple instrument, it's very, but it's very old. The history goes back to 5,000 years ago. This is one of the oldest music instruments that is still being used and played and still people enjoy it a lot. Uh, I don't know if you are interested in poetry or uh, those sophism, but Ney has a great place in sophism and in poems, especially Persian and Arabian and the Kurdish poetry, even in uh, Turkish as well. But even though the Turkish version of the Ney is a bit different, like there is a small difference here, they are played this way, this uh, way I play this, it should go between your teeth. But the, uh, the Turkish one, you play it only with your lips. So there is a, a little bit difference, but we have this one. This one is the oldest one. Like there are lots of different types of Ney, Turkish Ney, Persian Ney, and Arabian Ney as well. And there is Duduk as well, which is Armenian. But basically, as far as I know, according to the history, this is 5,000 years old. This go, this is the oldest one. I hope I'm correct. You can Google that later on. So, uh, this has many shapes and types. To begin with, I will show you two different types. Sorry, I'm taking a little bit of your time, but I want you to get some information about the instrument. So, as you see, this one is a bit bigger. It's for the ones who know about music, like piano, you have eight or seven octave. So each one of these is one octave, okay? They come with different, there is, a, if you are, have a musical hearing, you can differentiate between the sounds, but it's very little, and unless you are a musical person, you will not feel it. Today, I will be playing this, and I hope you like it. I will play three different makam. Makam is something, uh, usually it's, uh, uh, I think there is in uh, Iran, Ara uh, Arabian people use it mostly. Makam is different types of rhythm and music. So I'll be playing three different makams. The first one is named Esbeat, the second is Ijaz, and the third one, which is mostly used by Arab people, uh, it's uh, Nahawad. Okay? okay? I hope you like it. Any questions about it? No? no questions. If you have a question, you can ask me. Yes. yes. Is it a national instrument of Iraq? Yes, as I told you from the beginning. Uh, for example, this one is a national instrument for Persian people. There is another one, a different type, which is Turkish name. It's national for the Turkish people. And there is an Arabian version. It's national for the Arabian people. Okay? Can you repeat the name of this? Ney and Nay. N E Y and N A Y, both. Nay and Nay. In the Arabian version, they say Nay, but the Persian they say Nay. Nay Nawazi. And the English people say Nay. They say Nay. I mean, the English people they are they are used to uh, stealing words from other nationals, so they use both of them. You can ask questions after as well.
this one was Macambert. Now we go to Hijaz. This one I'm playing is known as Hijaz. Can I ask? Yes. 
uh, do these parts of music that you played now have some meaning or story? Yes, uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, Nate is used a lot in Sufism and in poetry, especially in Persian, Iran, and Turkey, and even uh, Kurdistan. Uh, this goes back, I mean, from the history, they say, when the, when the heart cries so loud, the heart, when there is a deep pain inside the heart, no word can describe it, no word can get the cry of the heart out except this. This music is what, and by the way, that is why, maybe it looks a bit sad, but that is how, I mean, the nature of this music is a bit sad. It's, I wouldn't say sad, I would say deep meaning, words that cannot be expressed by any language. Then they, uh, they say that Nate expresses that. In most of the po uh, poems, if you read them, when they, say, when they talk about Nate in their poetry, they, they say, talk about some deep pain or deep love that nothing can describe it. There comes a time where you want to say something, there is a feeling inside your heart. You don't know how to say it. I mean, there is no way to describe what is happening deep inside you because simply, humans feel, human feelings are so deep, sometimes language lacks the ability to describe it. And then that is the time where Nay comes in. Nay cries, it screams. Just like this, for example. When, especially when it comes to this one. Here, they say that the Nay cries and like screams loudly. Like this, for example. <coughs> so loud. Unfortunately, I cannot do it all, but when it comes to this one, if there was a professional player, the scream is so loud and so deep, you feel it directly. And by the way, this, when you play it in somewhere, maybe not for the mic or something, if there is a place, a silent place, and you play it, the place becomes so quiet, and so there is just deep silence. When this talks, everyone gets quiet, everyone becomes quiet. There is, this is like somehow, as I say, it brings the deepest and the saddest scream in us, in deep inside your heart out. And that is the meaning inside the poems. That is what, they, I mean, whenever they mention me, the name in poems and in literature, in history, they talk about the people who have been in deep love, for example, like Maulana. Mm -hmm. Maulana, maybe Maulana Rumi, the, an Islamic scholar, he was a, like, uh, a huge Islamic scholar. Uh, he has a lot of poems. You can read them, their books maybe. <laughs> he talks about Nate a lot because he had a very deep love deep inside his heart. He says that in some places that he finds no word to describe except the name. And he says in some places even the name cannot describe it anymore. Of course, that is, I mean, that is so deep for us. It, like, if words cannot describe it, and the scream of me cannot talk about it, then that is something we should think of. I mean, what was Maulana thinking of? What was happening inside his heart? Maulana was, a, was like a huge scholar. Maybe if you read about his life and Maulana and Shams Tabrizi, if you read their life and uh, their literature, their poems, you would love it and you would understand Nay more. That is the meaning of me. Any other question about this or the literature, the history? Now we are uh, live in, in Instagram. And Hello. They <laughs> watching you from Osh, 
uh, sent re uh, regards Thank you, from Bishkek. thank you, Bosch. I have been to Bosch. Bosch is a beautiful city. From Bishkek. And Hello, Bishkek. Someone uh, wrote it, uh, even on their uh, other side, they feel uh, the oh, scream so and <laughs> crying all the night. Thank you so much. As I said, Nate is, I mean, I wouldn't say it's sad because I mean, this is something, this that I'm saying, maybe only those who have been in love would feel it. But being in love is not being sad. Being in love is feeling what's real in life. Mm. Feeling the real things. For example, who, for someone who's in love, if you give them $1,000, that wouldn't make them happy. But if you shake their hand, for example, if you, do an, if you talk to them, if you stay with them, that makes them happy. Because they value the real things. Like being with someone, they know that people feeling hard, these things are much more important than materialistic. So, those people, they are happy, but their happiness is something different than the materialistic happiness. Mm. It's different than being happy for winning one million dollars. They would never, someone who's in love would, would never be happy for winning one million dollar. But, they would be really happy by like making a good friend, that would make them much happier than money or maybe a house, car or something like that. For someone who is, for example, someone like Maulana, uh, if, for example, let's say if someone like Maulana lives in our time now, if you crash your car, they wouldn't mind about the car. They would say, are you feeling good? Mm. Because they value you more than the car. You as a human, you are the most important thing here. So, I wouldn't say sad, I would say real, being real. The people who are in love, they are, they are real, and they feel the happiness of this. So, it's just a different kind of happiness. I wouldn't say sad, but usually people say, Nay is sad. That's how it is. I wish we all fall in deep love, so that we can feel the real values, of, uh, the real values in this world. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other question from the line? I have one. Uh, the second part was called Hijaz, right? Hijaz, yes. Hijaz is the name of place, right? Or... Hijaz is the name of a place, right? Okay. Hijaz is, I think it's in Tajikistan or? How it's connected? I, uh, by the way, I have, mm, maybe it's because their uh, Hijaz itself, I think, comes from maybe Arabic. It's an Arabic word. So maybe from the Ottoman Empire it has been this name, but I think maybe this rhyme is being used by that people. For example, Makam uh, Bayat is most, mostly used by the Kurds and the Turks, I think. Even the Persian, but the Bayat, the name, comes from this language. Hijaz, maybe it's being developed by those people, so they have named it that. And there is even, uh, uh, there is Nahawant, there is, uh, like a, there is Makam Kurt, for example. There is Makam Kurt. Makam Kurt is developed by the Kurdish people. The rhyme, for example, uh, the rhyme of music. Maybe those who know about music, they understand this more, but some, for example, culturally, you have some rhymes, especially to Kyrgyzstan. Yeah. I have listened to some songs, for example, in the toy. Right? <laughs> yeah. In the toys, the rhyme is different than the ones we use. For example, the <laughs> I remember that from a, I I went to a, a toy. I remember that, for example, that is something from this part. We don't use that, for example, in our part. In, for example, in Arabic, they did, they, there's another rhyme. Then, 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 something like that. <laughs> so these rhymes, these rhymes, these maqams, they have been developed by different people and when it's developed or when it's known by some special place, they name it after that. That's how it goes. But by the way, maqam is something is like the highest point of music as there is something else that is higher than that, which is speaking. Mm -hmm. Because we sh usually speaking is sound. So, speaking is some sort of music, but the highest point of music, as we can understand, to, uh, we can use it to understand and express our feelings. But music, maqam, is basically one point behind talking. For example, Europeans, they, they don't have maqam. 
they just they have very beautiful rim and notes, but it's something different. You feel it, but maqam talks to you. It basically talks to you. For the people who understand Arabic, Kurdish, Turkish, or Persian, when they listen to the music, it's the same tone as the speaker. So it's basically, say, I mean, repeating what the singer is saying, but in music. It's so near to the talk. So maqam is a very high, like developed type and rhythm of music that basically talks and describes feelings. It's, by the way, maqam, I am no one to talk about maqam because it's a very deep subject, but maybe if you search for it on YouTube online, you would find very professional people. Uh, usually there are people that use oud. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Uh, oud is one of the, basically, that is one of the oldest instruments as well. I mean, oud has been there for like, I don't know, forever. <laughs> so it, uh, they use that to describe maqam. It's a very deep subject. But basically, that's how it is. It describes some specific types of building sense like that. For example, Maqam Hijaz, it usually talks about the sadness and uh, like, it's used for sad things. But Maqam Bayad is usually used for uh, happier things. For example, there was a part I played in Maqam Bayad. That is a bit fast. Mm -hmm. uh, let me... mm -hmm. This is Maqam Bayad and it's a bit fast. Maybe you feel it. This one was in Maqam Bad, for example, it's a bit sad, but it's difficult to do this with Maqam Hijaz. Maqam Hijaz is always sad and deep. You cannot do this with it. So, that's how it is. I even remember that I heard many for weddings, right? And played uh, together with drums, Dao. Yeah, there is. Uh, I, I'm actually playing that instrument as well, but a little bit. There is Dev. Dev and Dauryan, which is a round thing. You play it ten to ten to ten like this. <laughs> Maybe another time we can play that one. It's usually basically used with that. It makes it better. Because it doesn't matter how good it is. One instrument alone is not completed. It needs something else in the background. For example, piano is the best instrument for the background. Piano is like, basically because it completes every music. It doesn't matter what it is or where it comes from. It just completes the background. It makes it more beautiful. So this name, even this one, it's not completed alone. It needs something in the background. Unfortunately, we don't have that here. <laughs> So yeah, it's basically mostly played with drum, basically drum, but not the one you do it this way. Yeah, you play this way, like this. <laughs> it has different names, drums, deaf, we call it deaf, even in Persian they call it deaf, and... Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So, let me ask. <laughs> First of all, thank you very much. It was very informative, especially for me. I don't know about others, but for me, thank you so much. it's a kind of new instrument which you introduced, and you said that it has a very deep and deep meaning and kind of expresses, as I understood, it expresses your inner soul. Yeah, what do you want to tell others? So, can be this reason for you why you have like interested particularly in this instrument? <laughs> that is a difficult question. <laughs> okay, well. Uh, I don't have a specific answer for that, but I mean, as I said, I've been playing this for three years. But I mean, uh, I first, like, uh, when I was studying third year at university, back in Erbil, uh, how did I was like, I was, from my childhood, I've always uh, loved poetry. And by the way, I have, even though I'm a teacher, maybe that's not nice, but. I have been kicked out of class one time, one time in my life. <laughs> and that was because I was thinking of something. I, I, by the way, I write myself. I like writing. I write in English, Turkish, and Kurdish as well. So one time in class, we had mathematics, and my teacher's name was Benad. Uh, he was writing some examples, and I had this idea of some writings, a poem. Mm -hmm. So I started writing. 
And the teacher noticed that I'm writing and I'm not looking at the table. He came to me and he was like, what are you doing? I raised my head, I was surprised, what is he doing here? He was writing on the table. <laughs> I told him, teacher, I'm writing a poem. And he was like, very frustrated, but he just simply said, stand up, go up. <laughs> and I went out. So, from my childhood, I've always loved poetry and the deep meanings you find between the words and how effective words can be. If you are nice to people, how effective that is. If you are nice to people, everybody likes to hang out with you. If not, everybody wants to get away with you, right? So, I've always liked these deep meanings and poetry, and when I was studying third year of my university, I had a friend who was playing this. And he told me, he knew that I liked music, and he told me this is the best. I was so into writing and stuff, he said, this is for you. I mean, I've always been interested in deep, me, deeper meanings of life, not just simple things. I mean, from where I remember, I've always valued, for example, friendship, family, over everything around. I mean, breaking a heart, and by the way, I have this writing, all I have is just a heart and nothing more. That is all I have. And basically, that is what we all have. I mean, anything else just can come and go, for example, money, house, car, education, certificate, anything just can come and go, right? It can come and go, you can get it. But behavior, being nice, being kind, this is something that lasts forever. I mean, even after you die, if you have been kind to the people around you, that stays with them. And if not, then that stays with them as well. So what stays after you is your behavior, your words. Even the writers, for example, uh, the musicians, what they have produced, if it's nice, I mean, basically anything, you, like, it's coming from a heart and imagination. So, we have this too. Other than that, everything else is temporary, it can come and go. And everything that we have, for example, the writings, the music, the, anything we have, basically, is a production of heart and friend, right? So, we value those things, but other, for example, I mean, the richest man in history, who knows their name? There was, a, there was a merchant guy, I know because I saw a video, but nobody remembers him. Even though he is going to be the richest man in history, he had uh, like basically like 500 trillion dollars or something like that, compared to that. He had it in gold, of course. See, nobody knows their name. But someone like Maulana or Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And people like, for example, here Manas. Everybody knows Manas, right? Even I know Manas. <laughs> See? Why? Because these people have been dedicated for something bigger than themselves, than materialistic. And that's what I'm trying to be. So I'm into this because I always have believed that there is a deeper meaning of life than just the material and the surface. So that is my idea. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for coming here and I hope we do this somewhere So else. today was uh, not only music uh, session or uh, mini concert, it was uh, also English talking part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and by the way, let, let's do that, in, uh, let's do that a bit for Jasmine here. Maybe in the near future we're trying to open a talking club here. And since I'm teaching English, so for those who are interested and those online, if you're in private call, you can contact them, and that would be nice. Or maybe we would have, we would make even a chess tournament, yeah. maybe. Yeah. So even if you're a chess player, come here, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.